Hi guys, here's your lesson on logarithms, just in case you need to go through it again. So first things first, what is a logarithm? Well, a logarithm is an exponent. So it's very important to know what the word logarithm means because we're going to be using it throughout this um, section. So when you're going back and forth between logarithmic form and exponential form, um, you have these two forms over here, so log base b of x equals y, if and only if b to the y equals x. So if you notice, your y on this side is the exponent, and y equals <coughs> log base b of x. So your logarithm always equals the exponent. So we can use that logic um, to switch back and forth. So this is for the first example, log base 3 of 9 equals 2. So you always start with your base, so your base is a 3, and the logarithm is the exponent. So it's the same 3 to the second power equals 9, which makes sense because 3 squared equals 9. Same thing for letter B, we always start with the base, so I have log base 10, of 1 over 100 equals negative 2, so my base of 10 to the negative second power, since it always equals the exponent, equals 1 over 100. And then to go from exponential to logarithmic, the base for your exponent is always the same thing as the base for your log. So I have log base 5 of 125 equals 3. Your logarithm always has to equal the exponent, so it's log base 5 of 125 equals 3. <coughs> Same thing for B. Your base is 27, so I have log base 27 of 3 equals 1 third, because your logarithm always has to equal the exponents. Logarithms are useful for evaluating exponents or solving for exponents, which we'll do later on. Okay, so evaluating logarithmic expressions, we want to know what log base 2 of 64 equals. So once again, your logarithm always equals an exponent, so we're trying to figure out what that exponent is. So I'm going to change this to exponential form. So I have 2 to some power equals 64. So I want to figure out what that exponent is, so I'm going to go ahead and break 64 apart in terms of 2. So I have 2 and 32, 2 and 16, 2 and 8, 2 and 4, and finally 4 is 2 and 2. So that means 64 is 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th power. So that means that question mark equals 6. So log base 2 of 64 equals 6. We can do the same thing for letter B, so we're trying to figure out what this equals, and your logarithm always equals an exponent, so I have 3 to some power equals 243. So 3 to some power equals 243. And again, we can break apart 243 in terms of 3. So that's 3 and 81, that's 3 and 27, that's 3 and 9, and 3 and 3. So 243 is the same thing as 3 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3 to the 5th power. So that means your question mark equals 5. So log base 3 of 243 equals 5. Um, the inverse property of exponents and logarithms. So exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other, which means they basically undo each other. So if you have the same base, so for instance, if you look at this, <coughs> I have b to the log base b of x equals x. So if your bases are the same, essentially they cancel each other out, and whatever you're left over with is what it equals. Same thing for the thing on the right, so log base b of b to the x equals x. So since my base for my log is the same as my base for the exponent, they cancel each other out, so that's just going to equal x. 
So if you look at letter A, I have log base 9 of 9 squared. So my bases are the same. So they cancel each other out. So that equals 2. <coughs> and then for letter B, I have my base for my exponent is 7. Base for the log is also 7. So that cancels. And you're going to be left with x squared minus 1. This property comes um, in handy once we're actually solving equations, which we'll do later on in the unit. Okay, so properties of logarithms. Logarithmic properties are very, very similar to properties of exponents. So for instance, if I gave you x squared times x cubed, that would equal x to the fifth because you're adding your exponents. Well, a logarithm is an exponent. So those properties are the same. So if I am multiplying what's on the inside, then that means when I expand it, I can expand it by addition. So again, looking back at your x's, I was multiplying these two so I can add. So for the first example, when I want to expand, since I'm multiplying on the inside and I want to expand that, I can expand that by addition. So that gives me log base 2 of 5 plus log base 2 of 4. And these properties will come in handy once we're actually solving logarithmic equations. So for letter B, I'm multiplying the 3x and y. So if I want to expand that, I have log base 10 of 3 plus log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of y. And then that is your expansion. If I ever ask you to condense to a single logarithm, it's just going backwards. So since these two are being added and I want to condense, I can take what's inside your logarithms and multiply them. So that becomes log base 3 of 8. And then for letter B, I'm adding log base 5 of 2 with log base 5 of y plus log base 5 of x plus log base 5 of z. So if I'm trying to condense that to one logarithm, I can go ahead and take everything that's inside those logs and multiply them. So that becomes 2xyz, if you want to write it in alphabetic order. So when you're expanding, each term inside the logarithm gets its own log. So if you go back to the first letter A, we had two terms. In your final answer, we had two logs. Same thing for letter B. We had three terms inside your logarithm, so we ended up with three logarithms when we expanded. When we condense, your goal is to get it down to a single logarithm, okay, just like the directions say. Another property that we have for logarithms is when you're dividing. So for instance, if I gave you x to the sixth over x squared, that would equal x to the fourth. Well, how did we do that? We subtracted our exponents. So since a logarithm is an exponent, that property applies to it. So if you're ever dividing something inside the log and we want to expand it, we can expand it with subtraction. So that becomes log base 1 or log base 7 of 1 minus log base 7 of 4. And we had two terms. So we have the 1 and the 4, so we have two logarithms when we're expanding. Same thing for letter B. I have two terms, so I have the x and the 8, so I'm going to have two logs. And since I'm dividing, I'm going to subtract. So that becomes log base 4 of x minus log base 4 of 8. Condensing, you're going backwards, so since I am subtracting, I can go ahead and divide the terms inside the logs. So that becomes log base 6 of 9 divided by 3, which is log base 6 of 3. And then for the next one, <coughs> I have log base 2 of 18 divided by y. Our last property for logarithms deals when you raise a power to a power. So for example, if I gave you x squared to the third power, that equals x to the sixth. 
Well, how do we do that? When you're raising a power to a power, you multiply your exponents. Well, keep in mind that a logarithm is an exponent. So I'm taking this and raising it to the second power. So what you can do is you can actually multiply them. So the, what that looks like is, is I can take this exponent and bring it to the front as multiplication. So this is 2 log base 3 of 8. Same thing for letter B. I can take the 9, bring it to the front as multiplication. So this will be 9 times log base 3 of x. So when I'm asking you to expand, you will always bring down those numbers as exponents down to the front um, so that they're being multiplied. If I ask you to condense, condense means we're bringing it down to one logarithm, um, and then before we can do that, we always need to bring up our numbers as exponents. So I can bring this 3 up as an exponent, and I can bring the 7 up as an exponent. So this is log base 4 of y cubed, and log base 2 of 6 to the 7th. Okay, now we can take all of our properties and bring them together. So if you look at letter A for combining properties, I have two terms in here, which means I'm going to have two logarithms. Since my two terms are being multiplied, when I separate them, I can separate them with addition. So this is log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of y squared. Now when you're expanding, you cannot have any exponents. So this 2 that's on top of your log base 2 of y, I need to bring to the front as multiplication. So your final answer is log base 2 of x plus 2 log base 2 of y. And then for letter b, count up your terms. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms, which means I'm going to have 4 logarithms. So I have log base 2 of 5. Now these three terms on top are being multiplied, so when I separate that, I'm going to separate it with addition. So this is log base 2 of x squared plus log base 2 of y cubed. And then your z was being divided, so I'm going to subtract log base 2 of z. From there, you cannot have exponents while you're expanding, so I can take the 2, bring it down. I can take the 3 and bring it down. So your final answer is log base 2 of 5 plus 2 log base 2 of x plus 3 log base 2 of y minus log base 2 of z. And then your last part, condensing, um, is just going backwards. So your first step is to take all the numbers that are in the front and bring them up as exponents. So the 4 I can bring up, the 5 I can bring up, and the 3 I can bring up. So this becomes log base 2 of x to the 4th plus log base 2 of the quantity y plus 2 to the 5th plus log base 2 of z cubed. And then finally, since all of these are being added, I can go ahead and multiply what's inside the logarithms together. So here's what that looks like. So I have log base 2 of x to the 4th times y plus 2 to the 5th times z cubed. And all of that is in a single logarithm. And then for your last one, once again, you always want to start by bringing up the numbers. So I can bring up the 2, and for this one, I can bring up the 4. So I have log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of x squared plus 1 to the second power minus log base 2 of y to the fourth. Now, since these two logarithms are being added, I can go ahead and multiply what's in those logarithms together. So I have log base 2 of 4 times x squared plus 1 quantity squared. And then this one is being subtracted. So I can go ahead and take that and bring it down. So divided by 
y to the fourth. And then that is your final answer. I hope this video helps you figure out the lesson once again if you were confused. See you in class.